Hello, it's Sheen here. In my previous psychological experiments video, I talk about the horrific experiments of a psychologist named Harry Harlow. And whatever you think about his experiments, I know how cruel they are. He did show one thing, that behaviorism, which was on the rise at that time, was not always correct. Now, behaviorism is essentially a theory which says that nurture is everything and nature means nothing. That's what it essentially boils down to. And the person who popularized behaviorism was a guy named John B. Watson. He is known as the father of behaviorism. And he carried out one of the most influential studies in 1920s on behaviorism, which could never be forgotten. In my last psychological experiments video, I talked about the horrific experiments of Harry Hollow, who essentially proved behaviorism wrong. And in this video, we're gonna discuss an unethical experiment being done by the father of behaviorism named John Watson. And the experiment which I am talking about in this video is called the Little Albert Experiment. Let's talk about it. In behaviorism, there is something called classic conditioning. And classic conditioning is basically, um, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a dog and you train the dog to respond to a little noise of a bell when it's time to eat. So the dog associates the sound of the bell with food. So even if you ring the bell and there is no food, the dog comes running to you. That's classic conditioning and part of behaviorism. Evan Pavlov showed that classic conditioning could be applied now the question comes, can it also be applied to human beings? And in the Little Albert experiment done by Watson and Rayner in 1920, they showed that, yeah, it could be done. And that's what we're going to talk about. Little Albert was a nine-month-old infant who was the test subject in this experiment. He was born to a nurse and although he was raised in an hospital environment, Albert developed normally. Now let's come to the experiment, which by the way, his parents did not knew about. The conductors of this experiment, specifically John Watson and his partner Rainer, did not ask the consent of the parents of little Albert. But anyways, let's get to the experiment. So, in this experiment, Albert was tested on his reactions to various neutral stimuli. These objects include fire, a monkey, a dog, a rabbit, and a white rat, which he particularly liked. Now, here comes the conditioning part of the experiment. Now that we know that Albert did not fear any of these objects, whenever any of these objects were brought near Albert, a hammer was struck against a steel bar behind his head. You can see right here, when the first time this happened, he did not cry. He was startled, but he did not cry. But after seven pairings of the rat with the noise, two sessions one week apart, Albert reacted with crying whenever the rat was presented. And instead of going to the rat to pet him, he would try as hard as he could to avoid the rat. By now, little Albert only had to see the rat and he immediately showed every sign of fear. 
he would cry and attempt to crawl away from the rat. The same thing happened with other objects as well. You can see right here. Whenever the rabbit was presented to Albert, he got as far away as possible from the rabbit. And you can see here what happened when a dog was brought nearby. When the dog was around Albert, Albert wasn't really reacting negatively. But when the dog came near Albert, he began to cry. Now, after this experiment, we now know that classic conditioning does work on human beings. Now, the question is, what's the extent of this fear? Was little Albert just afraid of the white rat or anything that has the characteristics of a white rat? Would such fears of rats and dogs transfer to other animals or to other inanimate objects? That's a real question. And the answer to that is, in fact, yes. So five days later, Watson and Raina presented little Albert with a fur coat and Albert decided to turn away from it and his response was one of anger. He also had a negative response to a Santa Claus mask. So it became apparent that Albert had not only developed phobias of rats and dogs, but also of objects which shared characteristics with the rat and the dog. He didn't just become afraid of rats and dogs, but he also became afraid of similar objects. This process is known as generalization. When Albert was presented with objects which he was afraid of now due to conditioning like the rat and the dog in a different room, he did not show strong negative responses. He did show some but not strong enough until it was paired with the loud noise. Then he became afraid of those objects again. The Little Albert experiment showed that classic conditioning could be used to create phobias. In this experiment, a previously unafraid baby was conditioned to become afraid of a rat and not just a rat but also objects similar to a rat like a fur coat. Over the next few weeks and months, little Albert was observed and after 10 days, his fear of the rat started to die down. This dying out of a learned response is called extinction. However, even after a full month, it was still evident that the association could be renewed by repeating the original procedure a few times. But by this time, Albert's mother came to know that, hey, this baby was being used in this psychological experiment that she didn't even knew about. She didn't even consent to it. So when she knew about it, she withdrew him from the experiment. And after the baby was gone, Watson and Raina could not conduct any further experiments regarding the reversal of the condition response. Now, the Little Albert experiment is pretty interesting. But of course, there were limitations to the study because, you know, Albert was the only test subject here. There was no other control subject, there was no objective measurement of the fear response and it was just conducted on one individual. You know, you have to keep that in mind while talking about this experiment. And also, the Little Albert experiment was conducted before the ethical guidelines were implemented in psychology. Like I've said, the experiment was conducted without the knowledge or consent of Albert's parents. And creating a fear response could cause psychological harm and they didn't seem to care about it. Like, 
how could you not and towards the end watson and reina did not desensitize albert to his fear of rats which they should have one of the most unethical parts of this experiment is the fact that um the experimenters john watson and reina um did condition albert to be afraid of rats and dogs and stuff like that but they did not reverse that process you know they conditioned him to be fearful of these objects and animals but they did not remove that fear that's one of the most unethical parts about the study also another thing that we have to keep in mind is that although i have referred to the fear response of albert as phobia in this video there is some doubt on whether or not this fear response was actually a phobia because when albert was allowed to suck his thumb he showed no response no negative response whatsoever that made him forget about the loud noise it took more than 30 times for watson to finally get a fear response out of albert so yeah let me know what you guys think about this particular study i found this particular study interesting because in the last psychological experiments video i talked about harry hollow's horrific experiments who essentially showed that no behaviorism is not always right and in this video i talk about the horrific experiments of the father of behaviorism that's john watson so i don't know i found that a connection interesting let me know what you guys think though um leave your comments down in the description um subscribe for more videos also like this video if you liked it and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.